Shin Megami Tensei 5 is here. I gotta say, this is one of those videos that I've been struggling with working on. Generally, what happens is I research and then I find some other stuff and research some more. And then I find even more stuff and then research some more and then put out a video. But with this one, I did a lot of research and then I realized maybe I can't find anything more. So this one's going to be a little different than normal. What I want to do this time is I'm going to tell you the things that I researched, the things that I found, whether or not they're pertinent to the actual game in the end is really up to the game developers and my ability to research. And what I'll do is I'll point out some things that are factually there and reasons and evidence why I think things the way I think them. And at the end of the day, you can make your own decision. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Bai. You guys know about Buy. I talk about them quite a bit. They're a premium proxy buying service. They're how I usually import any Mega Ten goods from Japan and bring them here. It's how I'm going to buy the Famitsu DX Collector's Edition for Shin Megami Tensei 5 when it inevitably becomes revealed. It's how I will buy any Shin Megami Tensei 5 merch once that's revealed so I can have it in the West as well. There's a couple of great ways you can use them. You can download their app and use the services there. You can also download their browser extension and manually add in things that you want to buy there. Or you can go straight to their website and browse many different shopping sites through their website. It's very simple. It's very easy. I highly recommend them and if you use my link you will get a 2000 yen coupon which will enable you to save some money on your very first purchase using my link it's in the description and it'll be in the pinned comment thank you again Bai, for sponsoring this video so first let's go over the japanese reveal trailer or the japanese pv one thing that's very interesting is that it starts off with a battle and we hear this dialogue about the god of law being in competition with the other gods of the universe. Amongst the demons that we see fighting, there is a new Doi demon. I'll talk more about what I think that Doi demon is um, later, but let's keep going. We then get some footage that we haven't seen before of the school that the protagonist goes to, which has a interesting logo. It's a lizard on top of a star. The star is significant because it's the five pointed star that's relating to the Japanese anniversary logo for Shin Megami Tensei. For the 25th anniversary, it had the five pointed star. We also gotta remember that's also the Onmyoji symbol used by Abi no Seme. It was so popularized by him that it was actually called the Seme star. It's what he used in his Onmyoji practice. The lizard sitting atop that summoning star is very interesting and I don't really know quite what it means. We also get the school name. I can't read what it is, unfortunately. I'm not that advanced in Japanese, but everyone's wearing that uniform with the flowers. The flowers are important because they're lilies. They look like Easter lilies specifically. The lily is a flower that's very significant because it relates to Christianity. It's meant to represent the white robed apostles. It also represents rebirth and hope. And if you didn't notice, the female version of Gabriel actually holds a lily or a bouquet of lilies. So the lily being used in this game is another indicator of the law theme. We also get to see the protagonist walking through towards this, what looks like an overpass. And underneath that overpass, you see two characters who are indeed the protagonist's friends, meaning that we are getting other human characters potentially. And then he falls inside the tunnel. It's important to note that the tunnel is 1.5 meters tall. That's about four feet, nine inches tall. He actually is able to stand in there, meaning he's somewhere below four feet, nine inches, canonically. The protagonist wakes up and he walks out of the tunnel and we actually see someone getting lifted up by an angel. This is one of the new designs. This angel is actually a replacement for the traditional bondage angel or the angels that existed prior to that iconic design. And then we see kind of like a ruined Tokyo. It's full of sand. So Anakin Skywalker wouldn't like it. <laughs> and the ruins of Tokyo is referred to as Da'at. And we see those imp creatures, Daimon as they're called. And then the mysterious deity, so far known as Aogame, which roughly translates to blue god. We don't know who he is or what he is. We just know that he fuses with the protagonist. This new fusion is Nahobino. Nahobino is a very interesting character name. To put it simply, it's a reference to Naobi no Kami. Naobi no Kami is one of a few deities referenced in the Kojiki. It's one of two major books about Japanese history. The Kojiki is a less 
important, I would say, than the other book, the Nihon Shoki, also known as the Chronicles of Japan. The Kujiki wasn't really as important as the Nihon Shoki, but it does have some interesting differences. One of those differences is in regards to Izanagi returning from Yomi after he went to go rescue his consort, Izanami. After he returned from Yomi, he felt the filth of Yomi and had to be ritualistically cleansed. This ritual was called Misogi. From that filth that he cleansed from his body, Magatsuhi no Kami was born. And almost as if to rise to the occasion, there were three other deities that were born. Onaobi no Kami, Kaminahobi no Kami, as well as Uzanome. Onaobi and Kaminahobi are male and Uzanome is female. And when I say Magatsuhi no Kami, there's actually two deities associated with that. Yaso Magatsuhi no Kami and Omagatsuhi no Kami. These might sound a little familiar to you because they've appeared in a couple of different things. Yaso Magatsuhi appears in Shin Megami Tensei 4 as well as Raido 1 and they both appear in the first Devil Summoner game. The name or term Magatsuhi appears in Nocturne as well as Persona 4. In Persona 4, it's an area that you can traverse and in Nocturne, it's the energy source that all people trying to create a reason are fighting over. The thing that makes Magatsuhi important in this game, however, is that it seems to be some sort of energy source used to do a special attack. The reason I say that is because in some of the scenes that we're able to actually watch, we see Nahobi actually charging up and when it gets to max Magatsuhi, he does a special skill. This seems to be like a replacement from what we've seen in Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse. So in saying that, Magatsuhi are the gods of disaster and Kami no Hobi no Kami Onahobi no Kami and Izanome are deities that are relating to purification. So Naho meaning to correct something abnormal, B coming from Kushibi or divine spirit. This is kind of put together, you know. So these Kami are meant to change misfortune into fortune. I, I did want to briefly talk about Izanome. Izanome is this deity that's kind of a weird mystery. It's kind of like the Nahobi where they don't really appear in anything besides the Kojiki. Uzunome is this character that's represented by fire and water, both of which are things used in purification. In some circles of Shinto, she's actually still represented and even worshipped. More on that later. Moreover, Nahobi no Kami can be considered like a priest who performs purification and Izunome can be referred to or considered a shrine maiden of sorts. So getting back to the trailer, something interesting happens where we get this text. The text says, I ask thee to become a god. That's very interesting because in this game's trailer, we're getting a lot of text referring to gods versus demons. Generally, Megaten conflates the two and will just refer to all things as demons. But for some reason in this game, we're getting a clear deviation from that where gods are one thing and demons are the other and infusing with the Aogami you've become something that's not actually human anymore and it seems like the general end game might potentially be to become a god. I think it's also interesting that the trailer refers to Nahobino as the defiant one. This is not really a turn of phrase that I'm familiar with. I don't know why they're referring to him that way but that's interesting nonetheless. This one might be a little bit of a reach is that what I'm noticing in the action when you're in battle is that the icons used for the press turn look reminiscent of four pointed stars. Four pointed stars are the signifier for the star of Bethlehem. It could also be a symbol for the cross. I think that might actually be a little bit of a reach, but it's interesting to say the least that it's something that's there. I don't really know what the four pointed star would mean in relation to Japanese folklore but that is a meaning that is represented in Judeo-Christian folklore, and I think that's interesting enough. And don't worry, the demon icons are still present on the enemy press turns. Now, one of the final scenes in this trailer in particular is a battle between Cert and a bunch of different Law and Chaos demons. We see a bunch of dead angels on the floor, as well as some dead Oni. It's hard to say that if all the things that we're seeing in this scene are from the same scene or if they're just a kind of combination to throw us off. But in seeing them, we are seeing mysterious feet of a character and that character seems to be the new demon in the red kimono, which can be seen here. I think that this character is going to perform the role of the heroine and I'll talk about that more in a little bit. One thing that is worth noting is that this is taking place at a shrine that is burning. 
burning being one method of purification, but in this case, the burning seems to be caused by cert. It's interesting to note that at the end of this, we see a tree. The tree is also the same tree you see whenever you get a game over in this game, as seen in the treehouse playthrough. It's worth noting that in the collector's edition, they refer to this tree as the tree of wisdom or the tree of knowledge. The tree that that seems to be for me is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The one that famously bore fruit and was eaten by Eve and then Adam, resulting in their banishment from Eden. Something else interesting is that we know the name of the person in charge of fusions. It's not Mido, it's Sophia, and the spelling denotes the Greek Sophia, meaning wisdom. And that whole trailer is almost completely removing all mention of Shekinah, the female divine, or even explaining what Dot is. But there's also more footage from the treehouse as well as the stream and the other trailer. So really quickly, I do want to mention something about the UI. It is definitely UI that's being built off of the UI from Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Whether or not you like it or not is up to you. I kind of find it to be a little too much. But in looking at the UI, I found a couple of interesting things. One being confirmation that Magatsuhi is a skill-based thing, as in the level up for Naobi, we can see that there's a thing saying Magatsuhi skill, meaning that there's some sort of skill swap, or maybe you can learn different skills, or maybe there's different Magatsuhi or something, who knows. Underneath that, on that same menu, we see miracles, what that means in relation to his skill set or whatever still remains to be seen. It's interestingly enough empty, meaning that it's probably something you unlock later. In the Treehouse playthrough, he was level eight, so maybe that's something that you have to get at a certain point. And on the demon screen on the bottom right where those two mentioned items were, we see Kamiwaza. Kamiwaza generally just means God technique. So it's like a perfected skill is what I'm guessing. There's some like weird finicky bits where we see that the text might not be finished because Tyrant Beelzebub is one word. Fairy Jack Frost is also mistyped. That seems to be unintentional. I also noticed some frame drops here and there. And we do get some confirmation on specific demons. And one of the giveaways is literally the name of a skill. Mac and Luen. The reason why that skill is even important at all is because that's the name of a sword, a famous sword from a famous Celtic mythological figure, Fionn Mac Cumhail, or McCool, as I've seen as well. This then means pretty much definitively that this character has to be Mac Cumhail, because really there's no other demon or deity that has that sword. It's literally the one person. In saying that, we also see a couple other new demons, one of which being this wolf-like demon. And this one is a, more of a guess than anything else, but being as it looks kind of like a wolf, it's got this red string running through it and it uses a skill that's a healing skill called Sun's Radiance. I have actually seen on Tumblr, thanks to Irajikaris, Sorry if I mispronounced your name. And this dog, I think, is probably Tian Go. This is a Chinese mythological creature. It resembles a dog, a black dog specifically, and it's thought that it could eat the sun or the moon during an eclipse. And I think that's pretty interesting. When it's good, it looks like a white-headed fox, and when it's bad, it looks like a black dog. And I think that generally, this has a touch of that. But that's also just a guess. There's a couple of other new demons as well that I thought were worth guessing about or speculating. There's a new tiny demon who does wind-based skills. They have bird's wings and they're wearing semi-traditional Japanese garb. Their hair is kind of interesting because it's big and blue and it looks kind of like a kendama. This character, I believe, is a Tengu. I think this is a new Tengu design and one of the only pieces of evidence that I can give besides the fact that it uses wind skills is small and has wings is that it's wearing special getta. This special getta is literally called Tengu getta. The reason why it's called that is because it's famously used in depictions of Tengu to the point where it's called a Tengu getta. I believe that the new angel design might just be a lesser angel. Like I said before, it might just be a replacement for angel. The new demonic spirit is Damon. Don't know who that is really. But in the key art used for the box art, we actually get a couple more new demons 
we get a demon in red, which is the demon that I believe is in that cert cutscene that I mentioned. The reason being is that she's barefoot and she has the red kimono, which you can see the pattern and the red of the kimono as she's walking in the very short bit of the cutscene. There's a gold metallic looking demon. There's tentacles coming out of a portal and there's a green Egyptian demon also included in this key art that's used in the box art. Now the green demon is hard to pin down because all we can tell is that it's Egyptian, but seeing that it has green skin and there's only two deities in Egyptian lore that has green skin, those deities being Osiris and Ptah, my guess is that it's one of those. The winged demon, I can't really think of anything. My buddy Spider says it might be Jophiel. Jophiel being one of the few female angels. But honestly, I can't tell you. And that red demon that I mentioned, the one that's in the kimono, the one that I think is in that cutscene, I think that that demon in particular is Uzunome. There's not really a whole lot of reason for me to think that, except that it's kind of in red. Red being one of the colors associated with fire and that ties into purification. The sleeves just kind of remind me of the Hakama that you see with Shrine Maiden garb. But in saying all of that, I will say that the way her hair is placed kind of also reminds me of that. We do see a snake coming out of some sort of headpiece on her head that's adorned with two flowers on either side. Maybe she's not actually the heroine figure, but possibly she's a Lilum like figure. The other idea that I was thinking is that we do see a character get pulled up into the sky by an angel. What if that is the heroine and it's not Uzunome? What if it's that golden clad winged creature that has a lance slash spear that kind of reminds me of the Spear of Destiny? And maybe this Uzunome looking character or even Amaterasu looking character is actually the Lilum of this group. It's really one of those things where there's so much room for speculation that I kind of don't even want to guess that much because I don't want to lead people down a path where they think something and then it's proven wrong. And then we have the tentacle monster. Now that tentacle monster seems to be what is actually approaching or being pulled out of in that scene where there's a bunch of angels and demons fighting. We see a cutscene where that thing emerges. That could be two things, I think. The first thing, which I feel like is the most obvious, is that it's a Magatsuhi. Maybe it's Yasuo Magatsuhi or it's O Magatsuhi or some sort of other Magatsuhi. But the fact that we see Magatsuhi used in the skill system makes me really reluctant to believe that they'd actually use it again and as a demon. The other thing, which is really a stretch, it kind of reminded me of the Huruko a bit from the Raido games. The only reason why I even thought about it is that I know that Haruko becomes Ibusu. Ibusu was born without bones or sometimes without arms and legs to Izanagi and Izanami. He's associated with sea life, so mostly jellyfish, red sea bream, or even sea bass. And I think that because he's associated with that, maybe that's why it's tentacles. But that's a really big stretch. They're both pretty big stretches and I don't really feel comfortable saying either way. Another thing that I noticed is that we actually know most, if not all of the voice cast for this game. The way that it's listed implies to me that there might be more important characters than just simply the main character and the deity he fuses with. I'm gonna list the names in the description as well as show them on screen. But to be honest, I'm not very familiar with Seiyu, so I don't know who these people are necessarily. I actually got mistaken earlier today where I thought the Lin from this was the Lin that sings in Persona 5, but this is actually a completely different Lin. We did also see some redesign slash new demons return. I might've mentioned earlier, but Belphegor is returning. We also see Kamael, a demon we barely saw since Shin Megami Tensei 2 reappear. Belphegor is another one that hasn't really appeared in things much after Shimigami Tensei 2. We see what looks like rags, and this rags, if it is rags, is kind of nightmare inducing. Whether or not it's actually him, or if it's just another thing that's very similar to rags, remains to be seen. But it's a thing adorned in jewelry, it's green, almost like jade in a way. It's even got gold teeth, it's pretty something i don't know how to feel about it just talking about the cathedral for a second it's completely different we got sophia we got the protagonist jamming out on a magical keyboard i don't know it's kind of weird we also get a new design for jack frost this is the one that was introduced at sega fest and this is actually a new design there's very few changes really in the boots we can see that there's a little dip in that yellow portion into the blue portion. We see that the collar and the hat both have a white trim around it with two points 
at the top of the collar towards where the eyes are. It's a very cute redesign for Jack Frost, very subtle. It's not the first time Jack Frost has been redesigned. He's actually been redesigned quite a bit, but it is a very cute redesign. This is a kind of a weird video for me to try to do because it doesn't really fit in the way I typically script videos because I kind of just went off of reading my notes, reading what I actually wrote down as a script and watching the videos and footage as I talked about it. If you guys like this sort of thing, I'll probably do it again. We also will know in about five days if there will be a collector's edition or any other goodies via the official Western release. Atlas is waiting until the 21st to release that information. Tell me what you think about the game so far. Who do you think that deity is, the Algami? Who do you think Nahabino is? Do you think we're gonna get a female heroine character or any other human characters? One last thing that I forgot to mention actually <laughs> is that during the live stream, it was mentioned while they were playing the game that Mo Shovu, she says that there was a war about 18 years ago. And because of that 18 years ago war, humans just cease to exist on this plane, this plane that used to be a land for humans. This kind of implies that it was like a post-apocalyptic thing and that this war between angels and demons really did kind of boil over and cause the end of human civilization. Another demon references such a thing happening and people have kind of considered that potentially this is a tie-in to Nocturne as Nocturne was released about 18 years ago. I kind of don't see that because that wouldn't make sense in terms of any ending because the only ending that would actually lead into this sort of thing would probably be freedom ending it could not be true demon ending it could also potentially be demon ending because demon ending actually ends with the land being a land of only demons and angels are part of the demon horde but we clearly see that lucifer is in some way involved in the earlier trailers not the one that we got today but the ones we got previously which would then indicate that Lucifer was involved during that war. But at the end of the demon ending, Lucifer leaves, and he kind of leaves rudely, basically telling you you suck. In true demon ending, Lucifer does leave as well, as well as the Debbie Fiend and any other demons that Lucifer had sided with. The only other ending that leaves, really, is just freedom ending, in which the world is returned to normal, but you are cursed. And maybe Akawa tried it again right after, we don't know. I mean, there, does, there isn't really anything to indicate that Lucifer just wouldn't come back once the conception happened again. But if it was connected to Nocturne, that's the only ending that I could see it being connected to, really. I don't think it's connected to Nocturne at all, though. But if you do, let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again, Bai, for sponsoring this video. Goodbye, fellow Mega Tennists. As a last little thing, people keep asking me what I think about Shin Megami Tensei 5 so far. I don't know yet, really. I'm not super excited, but I'm not that disappointed either. I'm somewhere in the middle. It isn't exactly what I wanted, but I think that that could never be the case. I think that there's always gonna be some disappointment when you put your expectations towards something that you care about greatly. That being said, I am excited to try it and I will do it with an open mind. Yeah.